Okay, this is take two. All right. That's oh, not going to work. One moment while I put this together, if I can, if it will. There we go. Okay, now. Okay, we should be live. I've got to set everything up, so if you will just bear with me a moment while I make everything work. Go. Okay. Perfect. It says I'm live now. That's what I want to see. Okay. And let's see if we can't get this so that I can see who is watching. Let's there we go, and then. See if we can't. Sorry, this might take just a moment. Okay. Okay. Do I have picture? I can't tell. It says I started streaming two minutes ago, but it's not showing me any picture. Let me retry. Okay, it says I'm watching now. <sighs> Can't figure this out. Okay, so I'm on. Good. And can everybody hear me? Okay, nope, it's just me watching. All right, I am going to be making a cryptex today. Um, I have started some of the things necessary to do it. I've got some of these shapes already cut out. Uh, well, and I've got some drawn on this white bit of cardboard. I've also got some paper tubes and I've got this in place of a Pringles can, but you can totally use a Pringles can instead of one of these. Um, a Cryptex is basically a lockbox that has a combination code built directly in. Ah, good. Can you hear me? I can't tell if you can hear me. Yes, you can? Awesome. Hey, how's it going? Cool. Okay, I can't, I can't tell, so if, if something goes wrong, you're going to have to tell me. Um, so I'm making a cryptex. I've pulled all my stuff around for it. Um, oh, I'm really good. Thank you. Uh, it was a rough day at work, but I'm not at work anymore, and that is the most important thing. Um, I think you probably missed my explanation of what a cryptex is. Uh, do you know what a cryptex is? No? It's actually a really cool thing. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a cross between, you know, one of those tubes that you um, roll up documents in for shipping 
and a um, a combination lock. So I've got a couple things around to make it. I've got some paper towel tubes and these are gonna make the inside. So that's gonna be the inside that I can fit things into to hide things in. And then this is going to make the outside and it's got all these flat edges and sides which will allow me to put like numbers or letters on them so that you, when you combine them in the right way, it opens up. Um, they are actually featured a lot of time in um, in old, uh, well not old, new movies about old things like treasure hunting and things. They are really cool. Um, so I'm going to make it out of, you know, things that I've got lying around. This is actually really cool because it's got sides on it, but you could use, you could make one that was flat and round with like a um, Pringles container. This is about the size of a round, a round of a Pringles container. Yes, it's very steampunkish. Actually, yeah, and you could do like gears on it too. It would make it, yes, very cool. Um, so... For this, you're going to want to start with two tubes. You could use toilet paper tubes too, but it would make a shorter one. And I kind of want one that's about this long. Um, and you'll start with two tubes and you'll cut one of them down the center. And I want to do a straight cut on this. So I'm going to grab a ruler and a marker and draw a line down the side if I can get everything to hold still long enough to do so. Go... There we go. And then grab some scissors and just cut right along that line. Um, I don't know if you know this about me, but I'm sort of fly by the seat of my pants for crafting, uh, which is not great if you want to know measurements and things, but is wonderful if you want to know the theory behind how something works. Okay, so I've got this one cut in half, and then I'm going to slide the whole one down the center. So that leaves me a opening and two layers. Um, and looking at it, I'm going to want this wider. I'm going to want it about the wide that I've got cut in these. And these are, they're going to fit on the end of that, but I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so you take and I want this to be a little wider and see I've already messed it up and not cut straight. That's okay. I'll straighten it back out and try again. Go and better. Yeah, and it's a little narrower than that, but that's okay. I kind of want the opening in these to be wider than this one. Um, ah, awesome. Thank you. Um, I shared it on mine too, but not a lot of my friends are interested in uh, crafting and things, so that doesn't work out very well. Um, I've already marked on this uh, at the width of a ruler. It's a little more than an inch, but an inch would work just fine too. I just used it as the, inch, the width of the ruler because it's easy to line it up and then just draw a line. Um, and I've marked it all the way along so that I end up with six sections. So the next thing that I'm going to do is cut each of these sections apart. And I've got a knife for this. You could use like a craft knife, whatever's easiest for you. Um, and then just be very careful and just start off by scoring it. I'm sure you're already aware of marking where you're going to cut by scoring it first because then it makes sure that your cuts stay straight when you go around the second time. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Um, this is actually just a screen protector box that I've had lying around for years and years and years. Um, I think I bought it for a screen protector for an old cell phone I had like 10 years ago or something like that. Or, no, this one was for a Kindle. Um, go. And then just a deeper cut 
And if I can break into it at some point, I can use my scissors. And actually, I think I will. I think I'll try and break into it right here and see if I can't get my scissors into there because the scissors are going to be much easier to cut with. Okay, scissors away. Just line my scissors up. Ooh, that's thick. It might be thicker than I... It's thicker than I anticipated. Oof. Tell it doesn't like cutting. There's a couple layers of cardboard on the inside here, so it's several layers thick, which might be affecting it. Well, it's probably definitely affecting it. Okay. We go almost one more side. There we go. Come on, you. If I had more patience, I could do this with the knife and it would probably turn out nicer. But I don't. And that kind of turned out crunchy. That's okay. It'll straighten back out when I put the when I put the discs on the inside. So pull off anything that needs pulling off. And that gives me one of the six rings that I'm going to make. And these rings will fit over these tubes and they'll be able to turn separately from it. So in theory, this will fit inside of here and this will fit through that hole in the center, which is probably going to need to be cut a little bit bigger. Um, yes, I do. Oh, I buffered, I'm sorry. Um, yes, I do themes-based crafts. I do a lot of uh, nerds crafts, um, actually. I've got a lot of charms on my channel, uh, like these. Uh, like here's a little TARDIS and a Captain America shield and a Porg. Uh, tiny little charms that I sculpt out of sculpty, Sculpey. Oh, I did, yes, I did a, a series on Magic the Gathering, too. Because I'm a nerd and I do a lot of nerd things. Oh, yes, I am. I am in the event. Um, I did a charm for that, too. Uh, which is going to be going up on... The 31st. Go. Hey, DJ, how's it going? I'm excited about that. Um, I don't know. Like, I finished that video so long ago. I don't know if there's something else that I should be doing for that, too. I want to keep contributing to the group. Um, but I don't know if there's something else that I can do. I suppose I could make another video for it, but I think that would be kind of overkill. Um, all right, and then see if we can't punch through. We totally should. I would be happy to hang out again sometime. Um, I... Had a day at work, but it's over. I'm at home now, so moving on. Um, true. Yeah, I do have all of... I've got everything but links to everybody else's channel in the description. I was hoping there would be like a list that I could just copy and paste from for that. Um, cause I thought that that would be the easiest thing and I figured he'd probably put that up too, but I don't know. And if he doesn't, I'll just go around and gather everybody's, um, everybody's pages and put links in my description to myself, to myself also as myself. That doesn't make sense either. That's not, not a very good grammatically structured sentence. Okay. 
Okay, yeah. I thought he was going to be mixing with other, um, with other, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, social medias too. So he may want us to include links to like Facebook pages and things, which might be interesting. Could be fun. There we go. There's another one. Series number two. Um, DJ, do you know what a cryptex is and do you need an explanation of it? You don't know? Um, so have you ever seen like National Treasure? Uh, you know, the like puzzle boxes that he gets into, um, to, uh, find out clues. Um, one of them is a cryptex. It's basically, and I think how I explained it earlier, yes, how I explained it earlier was a document tube, you know, like the kind for shipping, but which is also a combination lock, <laughs> which is just super fun in my opinion. Um, in general, I like puzzle boxes. I think they are a lot of fun and I enjoy figuring them out and making them and I enjoy watching videos on making them. Um, so I thought I would like to make a puzzle box and a cryptex is one of the earliest versions of a puzzle box. Um, as far as combination lock information goes, it can be anything for a combination lock, not just numbers. So you could do uh, numbers, of course, but you could also do letters or what I'm going to be doing today is actually a abstract picture, which you have to line up on the combination dials, which is what we're cutting out right now. This is going to be the dials of the combination lock. Um, and when you line it up, it opens and you can get at whatever's inside. Um, I have decided that this year for my friends and family I am making puzzle boxes for their birthday presents that they must figure out in order to get at the birthday present inside because I'm just a little bit mean. <laughs> but it's also fun and then they end up with a puzzle box afterward that they can then hide things in. So it's the puzzle box itself can also be the gift but I want to put things inside it too. Um, go. All right. Three down, three to go. But the last two will be only to held together by one, so really only two to go. It is. It is very awesome. I, I think it will be fun. I don't know if my family will agree. <laughs> go. All right. Trim off that. Okay. Actually, I probably don't need to be doing the scoring around if I'm not going to be cutting it all the way through with the knife. If I'm going to be using the scissors on it, I can probably just punch through with the knife and then use the scissors. So I think that's what I'll try. Go. I'm trying not to make them too difficult because they are meant to be birthday presents. Um, but there's a lot of really cool things on there and different kinds of puzzle boxes and different techniques for opening puzzle boxes and different difficulties. You know, you can uh, 
make them make ones that are ideal for like children or ones that are more suited to analytical thinkers um so they can be very interesting to use and play with go come on you all right almost okay there we go fourth and then last cut okay have a nice dinner I may still be on I don't know how long this is gonna take me I'm expecting it to take about two hours um, so if dinner takes longer than two hours to fix I probably will still be here actually right I decided I was just going to punch through with the knife and then use the scissors all right so just punch through and then try using the scissors oh I don't think I make that yeah I did got it in okay So how's it going now for you? Um, how's the new job? Probably the link that I posted, and I did share a link to this, but I think the link that I posted went to a dead end. I don't think I got it to the right place. That's okay. All six of these are now cut out, and they will all fit on this. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I've got two paper towel tubes here, one that is whole and one that is cut in half with a little strip cut out of it so that it doesn't meet. Um, these are all going to fit onto here. So the next thing that I need to do is I've got some templates that I made, but in, the next thing that I need to do is cut out all of these because they are going to fit inside of these um, hexagons. So I will cut these apart into strips and then into indi individual pieces. And for these sections, because they're going to go on either end of the hexagons, they need to be slightly smaller so that they can fit inside of the hexagons. And they also need to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I can't think of it now. Um, yeah, so they need to be slightly smaller so that they can fit inside of the hexagons and hold uh, hold them as the dials an equal and even yeah even distance away from the inner tube. It goes. Set that aside, and then cut this into strips. Oh yes, they need to be on either end of the hexagon. That way it completes a, a chamber with inside of it so that it all lines up. And these sections that are, are drawn out here are going to be cut out, like on the template it's cut out, um, because that's what's going to be the key that the pins, I guess you would call it, fall through. They're not pins really, that's not the right word. Um, uh, 
their blocks. Yeah, that's going to be the key that the inner blocks fall through so that it can open. And when it's turned any other side, they can't go through, so it can't open, which is what's going to allow it to open and close properly. Go. All right, I'll cut into strips and then cut off the individual pieces. There are six of the dials, and because I need one at every end, that means I need 12 of the inner pieces. So five, six, seven, Eight, nine, Ten, aha, someone's back. Um, now there are two other people here. Hello. Um, we are making a cryptex. That is a basically a puzzle box, a box with a combination that you have to know the combination in order to open. Um, it is sort of like a tube that you can hide things inside of. So it's not really square like a box is, but you can put things inside of it. And if you don't know the combination, you can't get at those things inside. Um, so far, Oh, it is. It's super cool. Um, so far, we've started off by doing uh, two paper towel tubes, one solid and one that we've cut in half and then cut a little strip out of so that it doesn't quite close. That's going to be very important. And then we've taken a tube, and this one happened to have six sides in, on it. But we've taken a tube and cut it into six pieces the width of my ruler um, because that was the easiest thing to do and um, now we are making the blocks for the inside of each piece so that when you turn it it has to be turned the right way in order for the lock mechanism to open um, we've got all of the block shapes cut out for the outer pieces and now we need to cut out their intersections. The intersections have to be able to fit over this inner tube. This tube's going to go on the inside of everything, so if they can't fit over it, it won't work. Um, they need to be all the same size, but as soon as I've got this done, we will be able to start gluing it together and you'll see it start to take shape. Uh, here we go. I'm going to cut the first one out and check and make sure that it fits over the tube because I measured it for the width of one tube, not two. But paper towel tubes are fairly thin, so it may work. And it does. Excellent. It's a little twisted because I twisted it when I was cutting it, but that's fine. Um, so this open end is going to line up with the cut tube when it's open. 
and I've got to do the rest of these. Oh, they're very, very cool and very, very old. It's not a new invention at all. It is one of the first, um, one of the first puzzle boxes to ever have been made. And it's a puzzle box because you have to know the combination in order to open it. And I've been really into puzzle boxes lately. You'll see I've got a I've got a video coming up that you'll be able to watch. Um, you'll be able to watch me make a puzzle box. It's a very very simple one, but it's very very interesting to me anyway. Go. All right. Um, so I've got six dials, which means I need to do 12 of these. I don't know if you were here for that, but I need to do 12 of these in order to, in order to have one at either side of the, each of the dials. So it'll be, it'll be a quick second cutting it out, but then we'll be able to get to the gluing. I've got my hot glue gun hot and ready. <laughs> I posted a link to Facebook, but I don't think it leads to the right place, which is fine. I mean, I couldn't, I tried going live, see I'm live on my phone right now. I tried going live on my Kindle, but it wanted an encoder and that's not working with the Kindle's camera. So I couldn't log in because my phone I couldn't figure out how to log in and go live to the to the pre-existing live thing that I'd already set up there we go. but what I want to do for my cryptex is a an abstract pattern uh, something like color blotches or lines or something to give it a abstract look, but that you have to line up all the pieces for. I don't want it to be difficult to open. I just want it to be something that you have to fiddle, fiddle with and figure out a little bit. Mm. So, my phone was on the charger and I walked out the door without it this morning, so I didn't have my phone the entire day. And when I got home, there were... I, I had been added to a group text um, where they were talking about a birthday party that I'm not going to <laughs> because it's way up north in Seattle. Um, and... I'm not, I'm not going to that. Um, but my phone had apparently been ringing all day uh, to let me know that a lot of my friends were going to a birthday party and I wasn't around to get the texts. You know, these kind of look like light bulbs. I might save those and color them and make them into something else, glue them down to something or, or whatever. Oh, thank you. I tried, but it didn't, I don't know. I don't think I went live in the right place is what I think the problem is. I think I shared the link to the one that I had pre-scheduled and then I don't think I went live to my pre-scheduled event, which is what I think the problem was. Oh, look, a new person, hi. Going live for the first time, trying to make a cryptex. Um, pretty far into it, actually, now. Um, not super far, but pretty far. 
uh, cutting out the inside blocks which will prevent it from just sliding open on its own without anybody um, trying to open it. Ah, see? Yep, that's what I thought. Um, I couldn't figure out how to go live to my pre-scheduled one from my cell phone. And I can't stream live from my Kindle, at least I can't figure out how to do it. So, you know, I just figured I'd go live and if people went to it and then, like, went to my channel to see what was up and then found that I was live there, you know, that was the best that I could do. So, almost done with these. This is the third to last. Go. And then we'll be able to glue everything together. We are actually almost reaching the end of the pre-prepared things that I've got, so we'll be cutting apart pieces of cardboard on the fly after this. Hey, hi! How's it going, everybody? Having a nice day so far? It was both raining and shining earlier here not, not two hours ago. Um, it was very odd. I was walking out the door and I looked out and I'm like, it's sunning. And then I looked further off into the distance and I could tell that it was raining pretty hard. But that's what you get here in the Northwest. One minute one way, one minute the next, next minute both at the same time. Go. Almost done cutting out these inner parts for the dials. We are making a cryptex, which is like a, I keep, I keep describing it, and it's the best description I can think of, like a cross between a document tube and a combination lock. Um, they're very cool for hiding things in, and um, they are one of the oldest kinds of safe. Now, obviously, making it out of paper is not going to be very secure, so it being a safe isn't really helpful, but... Oh, hey, two people have liked it. I should like my own... There we go. Now three people have liked it. <laughs> um, so I've got all of those cut out and I am ready to glue them on. I have got my hot glue gun hot. So I'm going to set aside my scissors and bring over my glue gun. And it is ready to go. And then I will just try and lay a very thin bead of glue all the way around the edge, if I can, and try to do it before it cools so much that I can't stick my end on, because if it cools too much, um, I'll have to redo it. So trying to be fast about it and trying to do a very small bead and trying not to just glue everything to myself. Oh, come on, you. You need more glue? No, you're good. You need more charge. There we go, all the way around. And set it on. And line it up, hopefully, sort of. Come on. And stick down. Nope. Maybe I should stick it down one side at a time. That's probably a better idea. There we go. Yep, that's working much nicer. I don't know if a different kind of glue would work better. I know that any like PVA glue would take way longer to dry than I want to wait for it.
We're just going to try to do our best. There we go. All right, one side of one done. And another one. And line it up. Set it down and start gluing. Yeah, it's surprisingly quickly coming together. I thought it was going to take much longer. Um, I think it it's this part is going faster than the rest of it will because I had uh, the shapes for the ends all drawn up ahead of time. And if I had to draw them out individually here, it, that would make it take a lot longer. Um, go, me too. Pull that up again. My my glue gun is spring loaded, so it doesn't force glue out when I haven't drawn this spring back. Um, and actually, it's got a trigger here, so it doesn't release the spring when I'm not depressing the trigger either, which can be pretty convenient. Go. All right, the first side of the second one done. I've got to do two sides on each of these. Um, but then they will be able to lock into place. Then we'll have to make the top and bottom of the cryptex and the blocks that will keep the dials from um, allowing it to open when it's not lined up or properly. Go. Draw that back again. That's got to be, I know I find that sound really annoying and I'm sorry about that you guys. Um, that's That clicking sound is the lock on the hot glue gun drawing back for the spring because so long as it has that clicking sound to it, it only releases it to a certain point instead of all at once when I hold down the trigger. Yeah, oh, look, six. Hi, how's it going? So, we are making a cryptex, which is a kind of puzzle box, a very old kind of puzzle box. Um, you have to know a combination in order to open it, which is what makes it a puzzle. Um, and go and we are right now working on the dials of the combination we are adding the um, ends to the middle each dial which is which are these hexagonal bits of cardboard that I've got um, will will have two ends on it one on either side that will be blocked by by blocks, um, thicker bits of cardboard, down the center. Hey, Sazong! How's it going? I loved your most recent video. Um, the it, Time to Fly? I don't remember the name now. Um, time to Soar? It was, 
It was about travel and flight. I loved it. It was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Um, got it at Walmart. It is actually, yes, very cool. Uh, I like it a lot. <laughs> go. All right, almost done with one side of each of them, and then we'll have to go around and do the other side of each of them. But then we'll be done with the structure for the dials, and then we'll be able to complete the uh, top and bottom of the inner chamber, because we are making a, I know I keep saying it, but we keep having new people. Um, what is the brand on the glue gun? It's got a W and an arrow, but it doesn't say a name specifically. Let's see. I, I will have to find out. I'll have to find out for you. Um, well, I love your stuff. I'm happy to support you. You have a excellent channel and I love watching what you do. Go, um, here, I'll hold it up so that you can see the, the logo. You can see it, there's the W with the arrow through it. I don't know what brand that is off the top of my head. I'll have to see if I can't find the packaging and I'll tell you if I can. It doesn't say anywhere on it. Although I am going to have to load up with a new glue stick soon. There we go. All right, glue stick away. Oh yeah, for the video after the live, that makes sense. Um, yeah, they are, they're very cheap and they are so cool. And um, I really like the spring loaded part of it because it means that it doesn't just release the glue when it's on like other glue guns when they leave the when they leave the glue stick sitting against the heating element. Which is pretty awesome because you just, um, you just un unwind the spring and it stops adding pressure to the stick. How's it going Paige? I don't think I said hi yet to you. Having a nice day so far? Mm. Pull it back again. Make sure I've got the new stick advanced. That is the only thing about it. And that's about any any hot glue gun. If you don't manually advance the new glue stick when you're adding it before it's been gripped by the pressers, it just kind of sits there and you lose your momentum. There we go. Void at 11 today, pretty excited. Oh, VTO'd, hey, yeah. I, I didn't even try for VTO today. I, it's been having so many issues. I just accepted it was my life to work. Accepted it was my lot in life.
but that was okay. That um, was what I planned for. Um, if you plan for work, then you're not upset when you have to. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if I can't slip a little bit more under that corner there, because you've got to be careful about the corners. Corners like to rise up if you don't keep an eye on them. They're rebellious that way, always rising up. Go. All right, and then the first one is good and solid, so I can flip it over and do another uh, one on the opposite side. Actually, let me stick that down a little bit with some glue, too. I don't want that coming up on me. And I'm not being too careful about how these edges look because I'm going to cover them up when I put the pattern on so that you can tell how to open it. And the thing about the second side is you want to make sure that the cut, the, the cut open part on this side lines up with the cut open part on the other side. Because um, if it doesn't, <laughs> you're not going to get very far in opening it. It'll be... Well, it'll be a trick opening because you'll have to turn it and then pull it open for each one, but you'd have to be able to remove the dials in that case. And the one that I'm doing is not designed, is not going to be designed to have removable dials. I want everything to be uh, together in as few pieces as possible, which in this case is going to be two. A the, the two different ends will have one of the tubes attached to each of them. Go. All right, and then glue it down. Go. Beginning of the video, what are you using the cardboard tubing? Um, the one you're covering later. This is a paper towel tube. Um, it's two different paper towel tubes, one that is whole on the inside and one that has a strip cut out that's covering over that one. Um, you could also use toilet paper tubes or um, other tubes. You could roll up bits of paper, although that wouldn't be as sturdy as the tubes are because the tubes have that uh, twisted layered paper thing that they do. Um, you could also make them out of like a heavier cardstock or cardboard if you wanted to, but since there is such a readily available supply of tubes in the right shape and size, it's just, in my opinion at least, easier to use the ones that already exist rather than make your own for that at least. Oh yeah, totally like. Um, there are people six. There are six people watching, and six people have subscribed so, or or liked. So um, that is good. And I think everybody that's chimed in so far is subscribed. There we go. All right, both sides on one of the dials are done. So let's carefully slide it on. Oop, that wasn't quite cooled yet. Okay, stick it back down. It wasn't cooled yet, so it can stick back down. And then it'll turn. See? Like that. So that is what's going to make the dial. And then the ends hold the dial in the right shape, and they will hold it in the right place so that it stays on and you can turn it and complete the combination. <laughs> Thumbs up, man. All right. And then very carefully, not lining up the, the wrong way, because I almost just did, go and I may actually want to clean that inside out a little bit. It's a little tighter than I want it to be. I want it to turn a little more freely than that, but we shall see how it goes. Um, yes, okay. I had to check and make sure that the uh, cutout sections, the key sections, were lined up for both sides. 
go. <laughs> no, the thing I'm gluing the paper to right now. Oh, this. Um, this happened to be a really old uh, screen cover box that I had lying around. But just as easily, you could use a Pringles can. A uh, Pringles can is about the same size of round, and it would be round rather than faceted. But that would mean that you could do as many or as few segments as you wanted it to be, and you'd just have to make these end pieces round as well. Um, This just happens to be a really old screen cover box I had lying around that I kept because it was a cool shape. And I like it for this purpose because it gives me the sides of a dial when it's turned so that you can have six. It limits me to six delineated sides, but that's all right for my purpose for this because I'm not doing numbers or letters. I'm going to do a picture. Well, not a picture, an ab an abstract um, bit of art with like color blotches and maybe lines so that you have to line up the blotches and lines to complete the puzzle and be able to open it. All right, second dial has a second side. Third one. Oh, hey, Gloria. I think it's a fun project too. Um, did you have a nice dinner though? No. I'm making a I'm making a cryptex. I don't know if you know what that is. If if anyone needs an explanation of what a cryptex is, I'm happy to explain. Uh, they are, in my opinion, really fun. Um, but I I happen to be really into puzzle boxes right now, so. I'm, you know, I'm biased. <laughs> Don't trust my word for it. Uh, make up your own mind whether or not you think they're a cool idea. All right, just sticking everything together well, hopefully. That needs more pull to it. Okay. See, it flows so much easier when I've charged the spring. <laughs> All right, third one done. Three more to go. This uh, this cryptex is going to have six dials. That needs that needs more sticking power right there. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I'm kind of talking myself through it too. This is the first time I'm making one, but I understand how it's put together. So it's just a matter of putting that understanding into practice. I just don't want to glue that down now that I put fresh glue on the other side of it. Go and line it up and stick it down. And as I'm telling you how I'm doing it, I'm reminding myself how to do it so that I hopefully don't mess it up because it's one of the more complicated projects I've done recently. Go. Let's pull that back a little bit again. Get some more draw on it. Okay. 
There we go. Oh, new person. Hey, Elemental, how's it going? I don't believe I've spoken with you before. Nice to meet you. go. Sticking everything down. We're making a cryptex, um, which is just a fancy word for saying a box with a combination lock built into it. Um, it's not going to be very secure because it's made out of paper, but that's all right. The fun is in solving the puzzle. All right. One... One more down, two to go. I actually think I want to use one of these for this. Oh, right, remember to line it up. There we go, and drop it on. Because I think these, uh, these ones I cut from the top and bottom of this box, and um, they are going to be I think they're slightly sturdier than the cardboard that I cut the other ends out of, but I did not have enough tops and bottoms to make uh, ends from for all of them. Go, pull it back again. Go. Yeah, I think they're very fun. Um, they are a style, one of many styles of puzzle boxes, which are boxes that don't open the way that you would think that they would or have a secret or a puzzle that you have to know the secret to or um, be able to figure out in order to open them. Go. And pull that back for the last one and make sure I line it up and start laying it on. Okay. Go. There we are, and I think we are done with the hot glue gun, at least for now. Um, this one's going to want to set and harden for a moment, but while that's doing that, we will make the ends for our tube. Um, the inner one is going to be connected at one end, and the outer one is going to be connected at the other end so that they slide apart, and you can open them to access the inside. Here we go. I'm gonna have a drink of tea real quick. Mm. Okay. So for that, I've got a bit of scrap cardboard here. I'm just going to make a end. And I want the end to be relatively round. So I'm gonna want it to be at least this large, but maybe a little bit larger. And aha, a marker. There we go. Um, and then I will just mark out the corners. And then use that to make a circle. And then cut this circle out and use it as a template for another one. Have a nice dinner. Here we go. Cutting this circle out. 
because I need to have two ends. So we go and then use that one for a template for a second circle. There we are. And then cut that one out as well. So did everybody have fun today? I don't know about where you're at, but it was raining and shining at the same time here. And I think I mentioned that already, but it's sort of annoying when you have more than one weather at once. Like, can't you just make up your mind? All right, there we go. The two ends and those will stick on one to the inner tube and one to the outer tube. And these tubes are actually going to need to be cut down smaller so I don't want to I only want to stick down the outer tube for now that way they're still lined up together and then I can stick the other end on in a moment so actually yep grab back my glue gun um, pull it back up start as far away from me as I can go around and I'm going to try not to glue down the inner tube, which I don't know, we'll see how well that works out. Um, but I hope it works out all right, because this will then hold the outer tube in the right size, because otherwise I'm afraid it's going to have a tendency to to like shift around and loosen up. So we just have to wait for that to cool enough that it holds it in place, hopefully, sort of. I'm just laying a lot of glue on there. I if I can see around myself. Actually, I'm going to need to pull this back again a bin, a bin, a bit. Um, so I will hold that tight again and do this part. And then that should complete it all the way around. And then once this cools and hardens, I shouldn't have to hold it anymore. But I'll set my glue gun aside and pull out the center, at least a little bit, that way I know for a fact it doesn't glue down to the opposite end. And then just wait for that to cool, which shouldn't take too long because it's hot glue and it's cold in here. Go. And while that cooling actually. I think I'm just going to set that aside and I will trim off these inner corners because they were causing it not to turn very easily. Although getting my scissors into there is not the easiest thing. Let's see if going the opposite direction will be better. Yeah, a little bit. Mm, not quite. Let's see if I've got something I don't think I've got smaller scissors. Too bad. Well, too bad I didn't know about that ahead of time. Ah, see that one trimmed off nicely and then that should make it not hit as much and move more freely on the tube when I turn it. Here we go. Does anybody have any questions? Does everybody know what a cryptex is? Okay. 
I tend to make tiny bits of paper whenever I'm crafting because I just keep shaving bits off. Which works out well because I start off with things larger than I intend to finish with them. I plan for that. Go. Go. All right, three of those done, three more to go. And this should be pretty much solid on now, awesome. Once we've got these finished being trimmed, we will slide our ends on and mark out the end of the tubes where we want to cut it and then cut the tube shorter. At least that's the plan anyway. Because these ends will have added a bit of width to each of these so they're not going to be the same width that they were when they were in the length of the, of the box that they came from. At least I think so. I could be wrong. They could be exactly the same length still. But I don't think so. I think it will make enough of a difference that it's going to matter. Oh, glad to see you're still here. Um, yeah, I really do think uh, Cryptexes, which I'm sure the plural is just actually still cryptex, but whatever. I do think uh, cryptex are interesting. Um, they are one of the best ways. The one of the only ways I know how to make a combination lock. Um, which are, in my opinion, very interesting on their own. All right, so one, and slide it all the way down, or as far down as it will go anyway. Aha, there's glue in the way. Go. There we go, one. Two. And once these are on and in place, they shouldn't be removed again, which uh, should mean that you don't have to keep putting them on and taking them off each time you want to access the box. Go. Go. Three. Four. Five and six. Okay, so that'll create the dials that you have to turn in order to open the box. So we're going to want to cut it off and leave just a little bit of length right here. So, like that much or so. Mm. Put a little cut all the way around the outside one and then have to use like a knife or something probably for the inside one. All right, one cut done. Not very even, but that's okay. And then those can actually smoosh down a little bit. They should still be able to turn. Actually, they may not be able to turn against themselves with the hot glue, that's all right. We'll leave them a little bit loose then. That's fine. And then a knife. for the inside tube so that they are still the same length. Just a little bit shorter because it ended up being a little longer than I needed.
And then just all the way around. And oops, stuck on the inside. I'll use the scissors for that, that's fine. Go. And cut. There we go. Okay, the right length now. Now we will glue the other end to the inner tube. Inner tube. The tube on the inside, if we can pull it out from the center now that we've shoved it down in. Go. Come on, you. Aha. There we are. And then glue this one to this end. Same way we did the first one. Hold it on. Lay some glue down. And this glue we're going to have to try and be conservative about it because we want it to be a thinner band so that it doesn't get in the way of the inner tube sliding through the outer tube or all the way into the outer tube. And this is going to be the basic body of our cryptex. It'll take one more step. We'll have to make the keys for the lock, um, the locks that keep it from opening, because now it can just slide in and out. But once we've done those, everything else will just be decoration. Oh, I need to pull it back again. That's why it wasn't wasn't giving me any glue. There we are. And just one more pass all the way around. And then set that glue gun back aside again. And set that there to harden. And then pull all of our dials off but one because we're going to be making the blocks that keep it from opening now. So the blocks are going to fit and they will be glued onto the inner tube and they need to be narrower than the opening in the outer tube so that they can pass down between the sides of the opening. Um, so I'm going to be using this cardboard for that. So I'll just start by doing a strip knocking everything over, of course, um, doing a strip that is about that wide. And then I'll just check and make sure that it fits inside of there and it's not going to, so I'll thin it down some. And it still needs to be a little bit narrower. Go. But that's why we cut things big, because if we cut it too small, we can always, or too small, we can't really make it larger. We just have to another, cut another piece. But if we make it too wide, well, that's quite all right. All right, so that's going to slide in between. And then it's going to need to be pieces that are shorter than the inside of the dials so that it can fit inside of each of the dials. So like that big. And then I think, I think that will be enough, but I think I want to glue two pieces, one on top of the other, just to make sure I give it plenty of width. All right. So grab my glue gun, stick one on top of the other, and then I need six pieces like this. So I've done one, That will give me two. Cut another strip out from here 
and now I know better the size that I want to make it so I can cut it closer to the size and that turned out pretty much the size that I wanted. Awesome. And that will give me three and four and I don't think I'll be able to get six out of this one piece. That's okay. got five and I just need to cut one more strip and then I'll glue each piece together and then I'll show you how that one's a little too small then I'll show you how they fit down the centerpiece so that they keep it from opening when it's not turned right and then we'll get to the real art part of it because um, we're going to be decorating it once we've made it all right those are glued together they're the only two that are glued together go and oh that ended up too long that's okay six there we go okay glue each of these blocks together getting a little string action going on, which can sometimes happen with hot glue. All right, that's five. And six. When you get strings, it means your hot glue gun isn't hot enough because it's not separating off the hot glue gun or the glue is staying stuck to itself too much. Um, but there we are. We've got the six pieces to go down the inside. And then what we're going to do is measure each one individually. So we're going to slide the inner tube down, put it on, grab our marker and mark it just inside the edge of the opening and then pull it back out and glue our block down just below the mark so that it will slide inside the chamber that we've created inside each of the dials. All right, one down, five to go. And that will be it for the structure of the cryptex. Um, so now we slide it back on Actually, no, we put this, we put another dial on first, so we're not going to be able to know where to mark it. Um, but the end is opened. There we go. We put another dial on and we line it up and then we slide our tube on and you see how the block slides down the center of the inner tube and hides just underneath the first dial. And then we take and mark where that is on just inside the second dial and then pull it back out and glue a second block in place. You kind of have to do them each individually when you're hand making it like this because they aren't all the same. And you're going to want to leave your dials on once you put them in place because if you pull them off and don't remember which one you had in that place, you're not going to be able to get them back in the same way again. There we go. And then slide it down the center. Forgot to put the dial on again. That's okay. This will be a good example. So when you turn, when you turn the dial, now the opening's over here, but the block is still over here, so you can't slide it off. It doesn't open. So to put it back in place, open it back up again. Won't come on you. Just gently. Wiggle it just a little bit and put another dial on and slide it down. Make sure it's lined up. Slide the inner 
tube back in and repeat the process. Go. Just marking it slightly to the inside and making sure everything is well towards each other. And sliding it back out again. And another daub of glue. And another block. And another dial and goes back on and make sure the dials lined up right mark it just inside Wiggle it and pull it out and put a dab of glue and a dial and slide the next to last dial on and make sure everything's lined up and it's starting to get a little tight, but that's what we want. We don't want it to be too free in its movements or it'll just slide all over the place and release itself without us asking it to. Um, and right, mark it, Sharpie, there we go. Sharpie. And Just wiggle and glue and I'm expecting the whole process to take about two hours including the decorating parts um, we shall see of course expectations often fall short of reality um, but that's what I'm thinking it should take. Go back in. Oh, wait, last dial. Almost always forget. Make sure everything's still lined up because I think that was the trouble that I was having was not everything was lined up. And slide it in. And take back up my Sharpie and mark the last mark. And for a first try, I'm not sure how well this is going to actually turn out, but, ah, see, that one was turned. So if you don't have them turned right, they don't work properly. There we go. And I don't have to pull this one all the way out because I don't have to put another dial on. So I'm just going to put the last block and then as soon as that hardens a bit, slide it in. And this is essentially the cryptex. I may take a bit of cardboard and put it on either side of that opening to reinforce it but also to keep the dials from sliding off and maybe like one at the back you can also do like parts that hang over the ends and you can build the ends out so that they've got more of a handle to them. But go and stick it on because this will prevent the 
dials from coming off. They won't be able to slide past that point. And you can be more exact in your measurements and thank you. Thank you, Cezanne. I like it too. I, I think it's cool. I think it would turn out better if I were being more precise and if I put the ends on the inside of the dials so that they were able to sit more flush to one another. And if I used round dials, I think it would also turn out better. Um, but for a first attempt, I'm not... I'm not upset about it, and this is pretty much the construction finished. So now we're going to be able to get to the art, which is the fun part anyway. There we are. Okay, so now we're going to want to do the art. And for that, I think the easiest thing to do, because they're all going to want to line up, is you do a design on a single sticky back sheet and then and then cut it apart into strips and stick it on. Um, so to that end, I'm going to set this aside for a minute because we're done with it for the moment. To that end, I've got this bit of sticky uh, sticky back paint sample. It's sticky all the way along and it's wide enough that I can cut it into strips and I've got my ruler right here to finish marking it out and then I will draw a design on it and cut it apart and stick it together. Where did my sharpie go? just had it in my hand. Is it under? Aha! Uh -huh. It's under the cryptex. We just put it together and it's already hiding things from me. And not even the way that it's supposed to. Um, I need six of these. I've marked out three so far, so I need to mark out three more and then we can get to the art part. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple markers here. I think I probably want to use those. Although I don't know how well they're going to sit on top of the paint. That's alright. Okay, so that gives me six sections. And then I've got a teal marker and a green marker and then I think I want something darker like brown that way they're all complementary okay so oh yep see that's not going to soak in okay that won't work let's take it off and figure something else out mm hmm um, what should we use? Well, I suppose I could just use Sharpie. But it would be very black and white then. Which might not be a terribly bad thing, having it entirely black and white. Hmm. I was really expecting those markers to stick. Or, well, not expecting, but hoping they would anyway. Um, let's see. My alcohol inks are... <laughs> Have a good night, Saison. See you later. Um, let's see. Ooh, I know. I know just the thing. I think I have. Let's see here. Puffy paints, or I think I might have gold. 
gold marker. I think I've got. I don't know whether this marker is going to work or not. We will test it to see first. I've got a uh, Elmer's Painters gold marker. Mm, nope, that's not going to work. Okay. It's all dried out, I think. I've had it for quite a while. All right, then in that case, we will use Uh -huh. We will use 3D fabric paint. Um, this is made by Scribbles. Uh, it is meant for fabric, but it'll totally stick to this, I think, probably. Um, and I've got a bunch of different colors. Oh, I could try the alcohol ink. Um, I don't know whether or not it'll stick, but we shall try and see. Let's try some yellow. Thank you. That's a good, that's a good suggestion. Go. All right, let's try some yellow. We'll try just, all right, it doesn't spray very well. My alcohol ink's very diluted. Um, deliberately, I like it that way. But, oh, now that's an interesting fact. Right, because uh, Sharpie is alcohol-based. Well, that could be interesting. Let's see if we can't run that around a little bit then. Mm, actually, yeah. Before we put any more alcohol in here, let's, let's lay down some more Sharpie. I don't think the alcohol ink that I've got is going to color it, but laying down alcohol seems to be having an interesting effect. I just don't know that the effect is crossing over the lines themselves uh, to allow it to create the key that's necessary when you turn it so that it lines up. But it's running, so let's try let's try this way. And then having some that cross some but not others, that way it has to line up all the way in order to complete the puzzle. And then when we put the ink over that and it all mushes around, I think that'll be really fun. And I will probably use a sprayer in that case, but I want to take this alcohol off. because it's not drying fast enough for me to continue coloring. Here we go. Oh, and that's an interesting effect too, that blotting, because that's giving it a kind of model look. I don't know if you can tell. Let's do lines the rest of the way and then put some more alcohol on and see what we end up with. It'll be kind of complex, I think, to do it like this and have to line it all up, but that'll be all right. It'll just be an adult toy rather than a children's one. Go and then grab, black, grab back my yellow because it's got a sprayer on it and then just spray everything so that it gets enough so that it starts to bleed. Yes, look at that. Oh, that's turning out really nicely. There. What do you think of that? Like it's going to have some more movement to it, I think. Um, I maybe need a little bit more up in this corner here, but I 
I like how that's turning out. And then I think I am going to have to let this sit and dry, which shouldn't take too terribly long because it is alcohol. Um, and then when the, when the alcohol dries, the Sharpie will stay in place, I believe. Then you can eye card the alcohol. Yes, I can. Absolutely. Um, that's a good idea. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to do eye cards. <laughs> I haven't done them yet. Let's see if we can't. Let's see if we can't encourage this to dry a little faster, though. Um, here we go. How about fanning it a little bit? That might create a some weird noises. I'm just fanning it with some stampy paper. But I'm seeing if I can't get that alcohol ink to dry so that we can cut it apart and stick it on. Go. Well, you know what? While this is drying, I'm going to set it aside then and make little round covers that go, that proceed over the edge of these just a little bit so that I can put arrows on both of them where the key lines up. That way you know from the outside, um, although you should be able to see it on this one, it doesn't line up perfectly like I would like. But that's okay. We will set this aside. Oh yeah, that's, I really like how that turned out. That's awesome. Oh, and it is a little bit yellow. Once that dries, I might try seeing if I can't get a little more action, um, getting it to move around with a different color because that is definitely drying yellow. There we go, all right, uh, so. I think I'm going to want a thinner cardboard. So let's see if we can't Aha. pull back this one. Okay, and then we'll want the edges that come over to be the same width on either end. Let's see if we can't scoot that. Oh yeah, that's as far as that one will go. <laughs> that's okay. Scoot them up that way just a little bit. And then we'll want them to be the same on either end, so like that far. And then I will grab my paper cutter for this because I do want it to end up being a straight line, which will definitely help in making it look nicer. There we go. And then just pass it twice, and there we are. And then I'll have to remember, ah, that is exactly one inch. How interesting. Funny how things work out like that. Not even measuring to begin with. That's okay. And then the other end. And then those should be bendy enough that they can wrap around. Aha, and they will. Excellent. Okay. Um, cut them to the right length. Trim that off. And that cut ended up a little bit crooked. That's okay. There we go. And glue this one down to pull back on my oh that's not oh well that's why I need more hot glue ran out one moment while I'm pulling out my hot glue from my secret stash of glue and secrets there we go. All right. 
another stick into the hot glue gun and draw it back and start lining it up. Go might have to wait for it to cool before I put more down. It's not wanting to stay down, it's wanting to lift because I'm putting pressure while I'm turning it. Go. Yeah, that might need some more glue under that end. It's starting to lift. It doesn't want to stay down like I would like it to. So I'm going to insist. Because sometimes you just have to insist on things. Um, there we go. And you can also like put further handles on the end, like another, like taper it maybe. Uh, that would be a really cool design. Go and a little bit more here. And then bring that around. And that, aha, is staying down. See? Just had to be insistent about it. And... That should help hide all of the imperfections, all of the secrets. Now nobody but you and I and anyone else who watches this video later knows. There we go. And that just needs to be held for a couple moments while it hardens up. And I will check the, aha, the dial inside of it does still turn, perfect. And that is dry enough. And it did definitely, it's definitely showing up with yellow. I don't know if you can tell, but I can. So I'm going to put another color on and then let it dry and do the other end. Um, let's see, how about do you think I should do purple? Would that turn muddy? Because yellow and purple? Mm, but the Sharpie's already kind of purple. Actually, let's go with green. Let's go with green. Or actually blue. Let's go with blue so that when it mixes with the yellow, it turns sort of green. This is a tealish. Ooh. Yes. Look at that. Can you see that? This is a very nice color to it. Yep, the blue was definitely the right choice. Uh, thank you. There we are. And then that's going to have, want to be set aside to dry again. Because we don't want to do anything with it while it's still drying. It'll, we'll, I'll just end up messing it up, I know it. Um, but we will take the other end and wrap it around and cut it to length, which is about right there, sort of, kind of. And also cut it crooked. <laughs> and this thinner cardboard that I'm using is actually the backing from a, what's the word I'm looking for? The backing from a paper pack. Yeah, that's a paper pack. So always keep your, your scrap things because you'll end up using them for something. Go. And then draw back up my spring and lay some glue around as far as I can while I'm still confident that it's warm so that it's going to stick 
And then set that aside and line this and wrap it around while totally covering my fingers in glue. <laughs> and hold that in place until I think it might have dried. This end's going quicker than the other one, which is kind of nice. And more glue. And glue back under this end again, because I think that kind of hardened off before I was able to close it. And line it up. Ooh, this one ended up a little short. Let's see if we can't squish it. Totally can. Totally can squish it. And then just close that up with glue. And hold it in place until it sets, and then it'll be fine. I am working with a low temperature um, glue, so it's not burning me even when I'm sticking my fingers right in it. Uh, low temperature glue guns are the way to go, unless you are working on a project that really needs something high temperature. But that actually looks much better now that I've got those cuffs on it. That looks much more official, professional. Now that I've got those end bits, go. And I will cover the ends too. Um, I'll probably put, I'll probably put white paper on them and then spray the, uh, well, put Sharpie and then spray the alcohol ink on them too. That I think would turn out really nicely. Let's check up on this and see if it's dry. It isn't, but that's not surprising. It wasn't fully dry the first time, but that turned out very beautifully. Look at that. And I don't know if you can tell, but we've got a bit of like veining marbling going on right there. That's, I think, very interesting. And I hope that these, actually, I didn't test it to make sure, but I hope that these are going to be long enough to cover all of the sides. Oh, and I didn't stick them down and I've covered the end ones. That's okay. I'll I'll very carefully push it underneath. That'll be fine. Um, okay, so this needs arrows to mark where it lines up. So let's see. You know, I don't know if the marker will set on this. Let's try marker first, see how it goes. Okay, so that's the end there. Yeah, the marker will totally work on that. And I can go around and color like designs, like swirls and patterns on the end pieces too. That should end up pretty cool. Maybe, hopefully, sort of. There we go, and then that is right there so that you know where to line the dials up to. Although, oh, um, hmm. We're not going to have any particular thing on the outside if we just do all art. Well, I suppose you could line all the pieces up and then turn them until they work. That would work. There we go. Arrows. I do love making these mechanical type of crafts really a lot too. Um, I think the mechanical crafts are the some of the most fun, the ones that have lots of different parts that fit together and work together. Um, you weren't here around for it, but this is, I don't know if you know what a cryptex is, but this is a cryptex. So it opens um, and you can put things inside of it. Um, well, you'll want to put them inside of the inner tube. Um, and then when you close it, 
if I can get it to go back in now that I've taken it apart, uh, which it's designed to be able to do. So should be able to. And then when you close it, you can turn the dials and it won't be able to open. Yes, like with the Da Vinci Code, exactly right. Uh, there was a cryptex in the Da Vinci Code. I think they also featured one in National Treasure. Um, exactly. There we go. Okay. And then we will check on our cover paper because we're doing a cover paper that is a abstract pattern so that it will line up when you turn the dials to make sure that they're in the right order. And this is what we've ended up with. Sticky. Oh, the, yes, true. At least for one end. That's a good um, thought. Uh, the other end still stuck to it, uh, but for one end I'll be able to do it, so that's a good idea. Thank you. Um, and this, I think, is pretty much dry. Let me try it. It's a little sticky still, but I think it'll be good for cutting. I think it'll be all right to cut it. So I'll set my glue gun back aside, and I will grab back out my cutter because picking things up and putting things down is half of what we do on my channel. <laughs> and I will make sure I'm not set down on top of my scissors and line it up and cut off the end. And I will use that for something else because that's really cool looking. I bet I can use it for like a header on the page or something. I have a problem with not throwing things away. But if I throw them away, I know I will want to use it later. I know it in my heart. There we go. Yeah, exactly. See, look at that. That is, that would make a lovely like header or like footer to a page or like a strip down it or something. So we'll keep those pieces and then cut each of these strips. Out. Oh, and this is and en uh, ending up a little bit longer than I wanted. I intended it to be about two hours, but this is actually almost finished, so we're just gonna Continue until we're done. But all we have to do left is put these on. So I've pushed them off the end in order because they're going to have to go on the dials in order so that they will line up. So I will pull out and open this up so that I can get to the end one first. Let's see. There we go. Open it up. And that's what the inner tube looks like, and that's what you can hide things inside, like markers, and then close it, and then you've got a secret marker stash so that uh, nobody else can use your, your good markers. Um, oh, there we go. All right, so quick as we can, uh, line these up, make sure they go all the way around, and not quite, that's okay. We will cut them into sections. And I want to check and make sure that this lines up with this. It does. Perfect. Okay, so that'll be the next one. And then cut it into sections that are about that long. Actually, you know what? No, I will divide it evenly into hopefully six. So that gives me half. And then to get three, out of each of these, I'm going to need to kind of S fold it. There we go. And then one and three, and then I will stick those down. And let's 
stick it on. And we're using um <laughs> Yeah, I exactly. I'm gonna have to keep the strips in order. Um that one goes there next, uh maybe? Mm, like that? Yes, like that. I was about to put it on upside down. Uh pull the back. Stick it on, then this is the next one and it goes like that. Pull the back off, stick it on, and then an S curve for this one, and this one remember has the uh, the marbly bit on it so I'm going to remember that that lines up there so S curve and I'm gonna have to do this for each of the six dials oh that's not gonna be the end so this is the middle and this is the first of the next three that we're sticking on Yes, definitely. Um, that's I'm going to always be turning it in this direction, so I always end at the same place that I started, and then I can go to the next, uh, the next block from that same place. And I also am going to always start on the one that has the key piece in it, the block piece. There we go. That's the word. And then this one is like this. Oop, but I have to be careful because that's sliding around. And I need that to not leave me. Go and on. And then, oop, set down the wrong piece. I pulled the back off and kept it in my hand and tossed aside the piece that I need to stick. And there we go. One dial done, five more to go. And this is the starter one of the next strip. So this is the next strip. It lines up with that one like that. See the end of that lines up with that line there. And first thing we do is cut it in half. and set aside the second half for the moment and then cut it in a S and make sure I keep those even and then this is my starter one it goes on this and I work straight down through the stack the middle ones face down but that's because I did an S cut and that, yep, lines up with that. Perfect. Hopefully. Sort of. There we go. Almost done now, you guys. Oh, these ones are going to be, they're going to have all cut edges and they're going to be difficult to pull. And then that one lines up there. So stick it on and turn. And that one lines up there. So pull and stick it down and turn. And this one is going to go like this, that's the next piece, Oop, if I don't turn them, like this, and S, and cut, and then this this is the back one, so this is the next one. That one there, yes, okay. 
lining everything up, final, final moments of the project, making sure everything comes together. See, and it would be way easier if I just chose to do letters or numbers or something, so actually if I make another one of these I probably will just do letters or numbers or what have you. Um, because then I could just line them up however I wanted so long as the correct letters and numbers made it on the side that has the uh, blocks on it, everything else would be gravy. Go. Alright, last sticker for this dial. Right there. And then those line up. And then the next dial. This one. Um, I do believe, and it's going to Yes, line up there. Perfect. Thank you. I'm liking how it's turning out so far. It's coming along nicely, but I do have to hurry. My battery is down to 11% on my phone. So if I suddenly go dark, you'll know why. Go. All right, this is top, this is second. S. and cut, and cut, and actually let me see if I can't get it to take some power. Nope, not going to. Okay, that's okay. And then this is the first one, and it's the key one, and then second strip. to the second dial, or second uh, face of the dial, and around we go. Go. R. Three more sides of this one, and then we're halfway through sticking them down. All right, S curve. Cut, and cut. My thumbs are turning a little bit green because this is not quite dry. Like it's staying on, so you won't notice when it's, once it's fully dry and in, in shape. But my thumbs are turning a little green from the, from the ink. There we go. One, two, three. All right, halfway through the dials. Turn it over. This one is here. Ah, no. This one is here. No, that's wrong. Um, there. There we go. That's the way. That's the way it goes. Go. And set that aside and just repeating steps now, but trying to be as quick as I can about it. I've gotten a little used to it, so I can move a little quicker, hopefully anyway. Just checking to make sure, because when you try to move quick... Hey, Patricia! Almost done! Um, we are making a Cryptex. Uh, it's almost finished. How's it going today? Oh, wait, we need the other half of this strip. 
That would not have been... Starting a second strip in the middle of the same tile would not have been a successful combination. There we go. That's good. I'm glad to hear you doing well. Go. We are just finishing up. My battery on my phone is down to, ooh, 8%. Um, but if we can get all of these stickers that we've done stuck down, it will be a working combination lock with a combination that can actually be figured out in everything, which is, I think, pretty fun. Complex and detailed and lining up. See, look at, look at how that lines up. That all, I think it's turning out really nicely. Okay, this is the next to last one, and this one is right here or here. Um, mm, am I lining it up in the right place? Yes, I am. Okay. Ah, yep, definitely that one, that way. Okay. So, cut it in half. Toss the bottom half aside for now. S-curve it. You liking it? I, I think it's turning out quite nicely, in my own opinion. I'm very pleased with the results that I'm getting from it, and I think the next time I try to do it will turn out even better because I'll have learned from this one. And I'll know how to make a nicer one. I definitely do think I want to go with like numbers or letters or something on if I do end up doing another one. Um, because while the abstract picture is really cool, it is also not a secret code, which is part of the appeal of Cryptex. And it's also, I think, a little bit more difficult because I'm having to make sure that I line them up the right way. Which is fine. Ah, yes. Well, if you have a plan, um, your steps will usually work out if you have a plan and you know, you know the idea, the theory behind what you're doing. Not always. Sometimes things go wrong and we don't know why. But if you've got a plan, it usually helps, it improves the situation. There we go. And I didn't check which one was my front. I think, yes, this one's my front because this one's the yellow one. And it's more yellow toward the ends. But someone not knowing how this was put together wouldn't know that. So that'll be all right. There we go. There we are. And last one for this dial, and then the tricky dial one, because this one is underneath here and does not slide up any further than that, which is actually pretty close. I think it'll probably work. Oh, thank you. I do try to explain things in a way that makes sense. There we go. That one is the top, or well, the first one, and then take and cut it in half. Thank you, Gloria. I, it means a lot that you guys think that I'm explaining it well. Um, it took me a little while to understand the concept behind how the cryptex fit together and what I was going to be doing. So I'm glad that you, that you are understanding it. 
because that means that I'm doing a good job explaining it, like an actual good job explaining it. Why did that break off like that? That's odd. Well, whatever. It's probably something to do with how the paint strips are made. The paint swatches? Swatch? Mm. Samples. There we go. Probably something to do with how the paint samples are made, like a peel in to help it be peeled or something. We are working at the end, or well, toward the end anyway. All right, there we go. One. <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that almost metallic bell sound, but that is a parrot shaking his food dish. Not because he's hungry and doesn't have food, but because it makes a fun noise. And I know exactly which one is doing it, too. Only one of them does. Let's see if we can't just... There we go. It doesn't have to go all the way in, um, actually, because the end's not going to be seen. Go that lines up there. Perfect. Next piece. And there we go. And stick down. And last three sides. Ooh, but 3% battery life left. We'll see if we can make it. Let's see. That one is the end, so this is the next piece, and that's the second. There we go. And it goes... Oop. Well, that was not supposed to happen. That's okay. I can fix that. And since it's broken anyway, we'll use this as an opportunity to put the other two sides on. go. Does that go that way? Yeah, it does. Okay. And last side. And then I think I'm going to pull the first one off and reposition it because that just didn't end up quite. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now put everything back together. Ah, see, I lost the stopper on the back there. That's what happened. Let's see, we can't put everything back down and on and find that bit of cardboard, or if we can't, make a new one. Sometimes accidents happen, and then we fix them, and then it's like they never did happen. All right, new piece of cardboard. Glue. Actually, that needs more spring. There we go. Glue. And back in place. Back in business. All right. And then make sure everything is lined up so that we can put the inner tube back on. And everything is excellent. And put it together. If you can. There we go. All right. In and on, and that is a Cryptex, everybody. Um, we have finished it. That is what I did today. I would be happy to hear what you guys are doing today. I always love to know the projects that other people are doing, and if you people's people are doing and if you have an idea for something that you want to see me do go ahead and let me know I'd be happy to hear about it from you um that's it <laughs> uh don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more things like this because I'm constantly doing different projects and I was glad to see you guys and um I will see you all next time bye